Hi everyone, welcome to Easy Bakeries where I show you how to create beautiful decorated cakes and cupcakes. So I'm going to get started right away. So over here in my bowl, I've already added in all of my dry ingredients and to that I'm going to be adding in all of my wet ingredients. If you guys are interested in learning how to create my vanilla and chocolate cake recipe, then I definitely recommend enrolling in my All About Baking course where I teach you how to make my vanilla cake recipe as well as my chocolate cake recipe, as well as so many different types of tips and techniques you need to know when it comes to baking. So once my dry and wet ingredients are nice and well incorporated, I'm just going to take a spatula and just give my bowl a nice scrape from the sides just in case anything hasn't been incorporated all the way through and I'm just going to place my bowl to the side. Now taking two um, four inch cake pans that have already been lined with parchment paper, I'm just going to equally divide my cake batter amongst the two pans. And now you're just going to place these into a preheated oven on um, 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out nice and clean. Once they have baked completely, I've just flipped them onto a cooling rack and you just want to carefully take out the cake pan and you want to peel off the parchment paper from the bottom and the sides of your cake. And then you just want to carefully flip them back upside down. Um, now that the cake layers are fully baked and there are cooling, I'm just going to start working on the buttercream. So over here I have some uh, unsalted room temperature butter and to this I'm going to be adding in my powdered sugar. So if you guys are also interested in learning how to make my buttercream recipe as well as how to flavor my buttercream, color it, and so much more, then definitely sign up to my email list on my website www.cbakeries.com to know when I will be launching my All About Buttercream course as well as all of the other courses that I hope to launch very soon as well. So I always get asked many times what type of buttercream I'm using. So I'm using American buttercream, which is one of the most stable buttercreams. It is a little bit more sweeter. Um, however, in my online course, I teach you how to make different types of buttercreams like Swiss, ermine, Italian uh, buttercream, and they're all different types of buttercreams and their method of creating the buttercream is also very different. So if that's something you guys are interested in as well, I will be going through that in my online course as well. So now I've just added in my vanilla extract to my buttercream just to add some nice vanilla flavor and once that is nice and creamy and silky and smooth you just want to give your buttercream a nice scrape from the sides of the bowl and then you just want to create this back and forth motion. This is very crucial in, get it, in getting rid of all of those air bubbles in your buttercream. So once you've done that a few times, you end up with this very nice, silky, smooth buttercream to work with to create my beautiful floral cake bouquets. So now I'm just going to be torting the top of my cake layers. Torting is basically just cutting off that dome that has formed from baking your cake. So you just want to make sure that when you are cutting the domes of your cake, you're holding your knife nice and straight so you just want to create this back and forth motion and cut off the domes for your cakes so now that we have nice flat tops to work with i'm just going to be torting my cake layer into two more layers so when you are going to be doing this you want to again make sure that you're holding your knife nice and straight and what we're going to be doing is going to be going all around the cake scoring it with our knife just to make sure that we are getting a nice and even layer um, if you don't do this step what happens is when you go to cutting into your cake you could have this unevenness which could make it very difficult to stack your cake layers so you want to make sure that you go all around with your knife making sure that you score it and then you just want to keep turning your cake layers while you run your knife all the way through the center of your cake so once you've cut all the way through you end up with this very beautiful nice even cake layer so now i'm just going to repeat the same process again scoring all the way around and then carefully cutting right through my cake so i've decided to cut my cake twice so i have three nice even layers um, and this gives me a nice even ratio of my cake to buttercream however if you want you could also just cut the cake right through the center so this way you have two cake layers with just buttercream in the center but you can see that the width of each of these cake layers is roughly one inch in width so now I'm just going to repeat the same process again for my second cake layer following the same steps like I showed you earlier so I've just sped up this process a little bit just because I've shown you already so again making sure you're holding your knife nice and straight and first of all you want to go around and score all around the cake and then just run your knife all the way through the center 
So now that the second cake is also cut, we have three beautiful cake layers. And again, each cake layer is roughly about one inch in width as well. And since we have three cake layers, we're going to have a good height for our mini floral cake bouquets. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next step now. So onto a cake board, I'm just going to place one of my cake layers on top. And then using a round cutter, you're just going to place that on top. So this cutter is too uh, big, so it fits to the size of the cake. So I'm just going to use something smaller, which is two and a half inches in diameter. Place that in the center, and then you just want to give it a nice twist. And then you just want to push your cake through the center, and you can see it's nice and easy. And we're just going to repeat the same process with all of the other cake layers as well. And with the leftover cake, you could just eat that or add it to a bowl with some buttercream and you have some delicious cake pops. So now I'm just going to repeat the same step again, making sure you place the uh, round cutter in the center, give it a nice twist and then push through the center. Repeat that with all of your cake layers. And if you don't have a round cutter, just take something that is nice and sharp and round and you can use that as well and it will do the job just as fine. So now that both of my cake layers are cut and they have this beautiful round size, I'm just going to be assembling my cake layers. So moving on to the next step, you just want to take some round cake boards which we're going to be assembling our cakes on so decorating our mini cakes is going to be a little bit more trickier than it is when we are decorating larger cakes just because the mini cakes can move around so what I've done here is I've added my mini cake board to a larger cake board um, and I'm also going to be using this tapered spatula which is basically that little angle that is going to help me assemble my cake so I'm going to start off by taking some buttercream and I'm just going to place that on top of my cake board and then you just want to carefully place your cake on top this is basically going to prevent your cake from from moving around and then in your piping bag you want to add in some buttercream you don't want to add in too much because that could take away from the control when you are applying pressure and adding your buttercream to your cake layer so you just want to cut about a little bit more than half an inch off the top of your piping bag and then going all the way around you just want to apply a generous layer of buttercream on top then using your tapered spatula, you just want to smooth off the surface of your buttercream just so you have a nice smooth surface for your next cake layer. And then we're going to repeat the same process again, adding a nice generous layer of buttercream going all the way around. And then again, using your tapered spatula, just smooth off the top and you can use the turntable to kind of help you um, turn your cake layers as well. Once you have a nice smooth surface of buttercream, you're just going to take the last cake layer and you want to flip that on top. So you do want to make sure that the bottom of your cake is actually the top of the cake because that is the flattest part of your cake, giving you a nice smooth top. So now I'm just going to take uh, my buttercream and I'm going to add a generous amount all the way around my cake. This part is going to be a little bit more trickier because, you know, it is a smaller size, so it's going to move around. However, if you are finding this process very difficult to handle, then I would highly recommend placing your cake um, after you've stacked it into the freezer for about five minutes, just so you have a lot more control when it comes to applying the thin coat of buttercream. And this thin coat of buttercream is actually referred to as a crumb coat, which basically allows all of those crumbs to get locked up into our buttercream and gives us a nice final finish to our cake. So even for me, I felt like my cake was moving around a little bit too much, so I decided to add a little bit of buttercream to my cake board just so that it doesn't move around. And then I also decided to add a little cake slip mat underneath my turntable, and this is also going to prevent my cake board from moving around. So now I'm just going to take um, my tapered spatula again, and I'll add, add a little bit more buttercream to the side. And once I've added a generous amount of buttercream all around my cake, then I'm just going to take a bench scraper. And you want to make sure that you're actually holding your bench scraper nice and straight, and you just want to smooth the sides of your cake. This is basically just going to get rid of any of that excess buttercream and also give us nice smooth sides to our cake. Then you want to take that excess buttercream off of the bench scraper, smooth that off, and then apply that same buttercream to the top of our cake. So this step is a little bit more repetitive. So again, you're going to take a little bit of buttercream, apply it to the sides wherever you feel like it is necessary. And then you're just going to take your bench scraper again, and then you're just going to smooth out the sides of your cake. And this is basically just going to give you that nice smooth final finish to your cake. 
Then once you have nice smooth sides, you're just going to take that excess buttercream off of your bench scraper and take that off. And then you can see there's a little bit of buttercream that's hanging over the edge of your cake. You're just going to angle your tapered spatula and kind of pull that lip of frosting to the center of your cake, taking that excess buttercream and scraping it against your bench scraper. Once all of that buttercream that was hanging over the edge is actually nice and smooth, you have a nice beautiful finished crumb coated cake. So now I'm just going to place this cake into the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes or it's an, until it's nice and firm to the touch and I'm going to work on the next cake in the meantime. So again, we're going to follow the same steps like I showed you earlier, add a little bit of buttercream to the base of our cake board, then add a nice thin layer of buttercream in the center of our cake, smooth it out, then we're going to add our next cake layer. Again, add a nice generous amount of buttercream to our cake layer, smooth it out, and then take your last cake layer, flip it upside down, and then just add a generous amount of buttercream all around the cake, and then you just want to smooth that all around with their tapered spatula. And then taking your bench scraper, you just want to smooth all around the cake. If you are finding it a little bit difficult to work with the cake, then just place your cake into the freezer for about five minutes or until it's nice and firm just to make the um, decorating process a little bit more easier. And then you just want to go back and apply a little bit more buttercream wherever it's needed and then again just smooth the sides of your cake. And then again, you want to bring that lip of frosting to the center of the cake just until you have a nice smooth top. So now that the cake has been uh, crumb coated, we're going to place this cake into the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes or in the freezer for five minutes. So once it comes out of the fridge um, or the freezer and it is nice and firm to the touch, which basically means you touch it and none of the buttercream gets onto, the, onto your fingers, now we can move on to the next step. So taking some of that American buttercream, we're just going to add a generous amount only on the top of our cake layers. So normally I would add buttercream all around the cake, but for this, where we're just going to be applying buttercream to the top of our cake and just going to be smoothing that out. So you want to just keep smoothing it out until you have a nice even layer of buttercream on top. And then you just want to hold your tapered spatula nice and straight from the sides just so you have a nice even side to that as well. And that's going to cause some of that buttercream to kind of get lifted. So again, you're just going to bring that lip of frosting towards the center of your cake until you get a nice smooth final finish to the top of your cake layer. So now we're just going to move on to the next one as well. So following the same method, holding your tapered spatula on an angle, smoothing off the top, wherever you feel it is uneven, just add a little bit more buttercream. And then we're just going to hold the tapered spatula nice and straight, just so we have nice round sides all the way through. And then that's going to cause some of that buttercream to hang over the edge. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring that lip of frosting towards the center of the cake just until we have nice smooth finish to our buttercream. So normally I would apply buttercream all the way around my cake as well. But for this, um, we're just going to be adding buttercream to the top of our cakes since the sides are going to be covered with chocolate. So this is actually going to make the process a lot more easier rather than having to smooth the sides of our cake with buttercream. But since we are working with chocolate, the only thing is you have to work a lot more faster. So, um, but it's definitely going to be saving you a lot of time with getting those smooth sides. So I'm just going to place this into the fridge again for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the top is nice and firm to the touch. So this was in the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes and now we're going to move on to the next step, which is basically measuring the circumference of our cake layers. So over here I have this measuring tape. You want to just measure the circumference of our cake because we're going to be using this to measure our acetate sheet. So you just want to make sure you're holding it nice and tight all around the cake just so you get an accurate measurement of your uh, cake. And you can see that this is roughly about 8 inches in circumference. So the second cake layer should roughly be the same size as well. So you just want to make sure that you are still measuring both of your cake layers just so you make sure that you cut the acetate sheet to the same size. So you can see that this is roughly also the same size as well. So this is also 8 inches. So then you want to cut your acetate sheet to the same length. I'm actually going to be cutting my acetate sheet one and a half inches more. So since it was eight, I'm going to go about nine and a half just because I prefer to have a little bit more than to have less. So then you just want to take your measuring tape and place that on top of your acetate sheet and using a marker just kind of create a little mark. Um, you want to do that all the way through your acetate sheet just to make sure that you have the same length all the way through. So 
So once you've created a mark on your acetate sheet, you want to just take some scissors and you just want to cut your acetate sheet. So now that we have accurate measurement for the length of our cake, now we're going to measure the height of both of these cakes as well. So both of these cakes are roughly about two and a half inches in height. So again, you just want to measure them and then you just want to create a guide on your acetate sheet to that same height as well. So you're just going to mark where it is two and a half. So I'm just going to measure the height again. So it is slightly less than two and a half. So it's roughly about, I think, two and a little bit over, like about two and two inches. But I'm going to make it a little bit more, so about two and a half, because I want some of that chocolate to hang over the edge of the cake, just because this is a mini floral cake bouquet. So you want some of those um, buttercream flowers to kind of um, be hidden inside of the actual cake layer. So we want some of that chocolate to hang over the edge. So again, you just want to create that guide on top of our acetate sheet, making sure you go all the way through so it is nice and even. And once you've created that guide, you're just going to take some scissors and you're just going to cut all the way through. So both of the sizes of the acetate sheets aren't actually the same right now, so I'm just going to place them um, all around the sides of the cake just to make sure that the height is actually working. So you can see that the second acetate sheet is a little bit too big. So I'm just going to place the bottom acetate sheet on top of the uh, top one just so that I have an accurate uh, measurement for both of them so that they are both roughly about the same size and they do fit properly around the height of my cake as well. So you can see that there is a little bit of that difference so I'm just going to um, create a mark over the top and make sure that you know they are nice and even and then taking some scissors I'm just going to take some of that excess acetate sheet and cut that off. So now I have the perfect length and height for my acetate sheet to go all around of my cake bouquet. So now that we have the perfect acetate sheet, we're going to work on creating the uh, chocolate that goes all around the actual cake. So over here I have about three-fourths of a cup of semi-sweet chocolate and what you want to do is you want to place this bowl into the microwave on 10 to 15 second intervals. So you just place this into the microwave for 10 seconds, give everything a nice mix, place it back into the microwave for 10 seconds until it's all nice and melted. Also you do want to make sure that you are working quickly because once the chocolate does start to set it's going to get thicker and harder to work with and it's not going to give you that nice shine on your acetate sheet. So now that the chocolate is melted, I'm just going to start working on the acetate sheet. So you're just going to place your acetate sheet on top of a parchment paper and that's just going to make it a lot more easier and less messy when we are applying the chocolate on top of our acetate sheet. So just take generous amounts of that chocolate and you want to place that over your acetate sheet. And once you've done that, you want to take your tapered spatula and this is going to make it a lot more easier to spread um, over our actual acetate sheet. So just hold that down and kind of glide that in one long motion. That's basically going to give you a nice even spread of chocolate on top of your acetate sheet. Wherever you feel like there isn't um, enough chocolate, just add more chocolate and then again, just spread that nice and carefully. So just take your time with this process, but at the same time, you still want to work a little bit faster because the chocolate is going to get thicker and harder to work with. So then with one long stroke, you just want to glide that over the acetate sheet. This is going to give us a nice even spread. So once you've done that a few times and you know that you have a nice even layer of chocolate on your acetate sheet, just take the excess um, chocolate off from your tapered spatula, move your cake forward, and then carefully try to find the corner of your acetate sheet. Once you've lift that off from your parchment paper, you're going to carefully wrap that all around your cake. So hold that nice and straight. And then you just want to slowly turn your cake and cover the entire, entire side of your cake with the chocolate. So at this point, um, you just want to carefully press that into the cake. You don't want to apply too much pressure. And you can see that little um, piece of chocolate that's hanging over the edge. I actually suggest you 
leave it hanging rather than covering it like I did because removing that from the actual cake was a lot more difficult so you just want to keep that hanging out of the edge at this point you want to place this cake into the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it becomes nice and firm and in the meantime I'm going to repeat the same process again on the next cake so again just want to place your acetate sheet onto the parchment paper and then take some of that chocolate and apply a generous amount on top of your acetate sheet and then taking your tapered spatula you just want to glide that over the top in a nice smooth motion this is just going to give us a nice even layer of chocolate spread on top of our acetate sheet so you have to work quickly you can see the chocolate is getting thicker if the chocolate is getting a little too thick you can always place the bowl in the microwave for a few more seconds just so the chocolate can loosen up again so we're going to repeat the process find the corner of the acetate sheet lift that off from the parchment paper and then you want to carefully wrap that all around of your cake so just keep turning your cake and slowly cover the entire sides with the acetate sheet and then you want to carefully just press that onto the cake. Don't apply too much pressure. And then you want to place your cake into the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's nice and firm. The chocolate, um, if you peel off the corner of the acetate sheet, it's going to kind of peel off easily. And that's when you know you can actually uh, move on to the next step. So at this point, the cake was in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes and you can see that the chocolate has completely set. So now I'm just going to carefully peel back the acetate sheet from from the chocolate and you can see that it actually comes off nice and easily so you want to just do that and it's going to give us a nice shine on our cake as well so this is the part where I wish I hadn't overlapped the uh, two pieces of chocolates together and you just let that little piece hanging. So what you're going to do now is you want to carefully taking a knife if you do the same thing you know carefully um, take off that excess overlapping chocolate but it is better if you don't overlap that part because then the um, acetate sheet will actually come off from the sides of the cake a lot more easily. So you can see that there's this nice little joint on and that can be the back of the cake and now we're just going to repeat the same process again for our next one. So just find the corner of the edge of our acetate sheet and then you just want to carefully peel off the acetate sheet from the entire sides of our cake. And then again, wherever that overlap is, you want to be very careful just so that you don't break off the sides of our cake. So just taking a knife, you just want to be very gentle and remove that overlapping um, excess chocolate. So just be careful and take your time with this process. But if you don't overlap, then the chocolate will be removed a lot more easily. Now moving on to the next step. Over here, I have some clear coconut extract. Um, you can use any clear extract as well as some gold luster dust. So over here I have two different types of gold shades of luster dust. This first one is called the Wedding Gold by the Sugar Art which has a little bit of a deeper gold color. And then the other one is referred to as a Super Gold and it has a little bit more of a brighter gold shade to it. However, you can use whichever color of luster dust you want. If you want you can also do silver. Um, depends on the style of the mini floral bouquets you're going for. So I'm going to be using the Super Gold luster dust and adding a generous amount onto my plate i'm going to be painting the entire cake with this gold uh, leaving one inch from the bottom so you want the consistency of this gold paint to kind of be spreadable so it's easy and uh, nice and easy to apply all around the chocolate so just taking a paintbrush you just want to carefully paint all around the cake so this is not a very difficult process it is a little bit time consuming so you just want to go in the same back and forth brush stroke motion so you don't want to go up and down once you go left and right you want to make sure that you're going left and right all the way through this is going to give you a nice even um, consistency when we are painting so you can see i'm just taking my brush stroke and kind of moving back and forth you want to do that same motion all the way around so you don't want to go up and then you want to go left and right and then kind of on an angle you want to make sure that you are keeping it consistent with your brush strokes constantly going in a back and forth motion. So whenever you feel like you're running out of that gold paint, you just want to take some of that coconut extract and add a little bit more luster dust and you want to create that medium consistency texture. 
so you can see i'm going in that same direction you want to go back um and forth even you don't want to go back and forth you kind of just want to go in that same direction and that's just going to give you a nice beautiful finish to your cake so that little bit of chocolate that was also hanging over the edge the inside you can see the chocolate showing through so you also want to color that with that gold paint as well and you can see you want to just be nice and patient with this process and go in the same direction so what I'm doing right now is kind of just like this first coating going all the way around my cake because you can still see a lot of that chocolate is still showing through so I'm just going to create this one coating all around and work on the next one kind of giving it like the first coating of this gold paint so you can see going that same direction all the way around I've sped up the process a little bit here just because you know you can see what I've been doing um, so it is a little bit time consuming but it's not difficult at all and once I've created that first coating then what you want to do is you want to take your first cake that was just sitting on the side and go back and uh, kind of cover that wherever those imperfections are so you can still see some of that chocolate showing through so just go back and cover every part that you see that is still showing through so you can see that it's nice and covered I'm just going to repeat the same process again with the next one and this coating is a little bit more thicker you can see so I'm getting a nice coverage all around my chocolate so wherever you're seeing some of that chocolate show through just go back and forth until you feel um, happy with the final finish and none of that chocolate is showing through and you have a very nice beautiful uh, golden covering all around your chocolate so at this point I'm happy with both of the mini cakes they're completely covered and none of that chocolate is really showing through there's a nice beautiful coating of that gold luster dust so now I'm just going to be covering the bottom with some of that chocolate so again we're going to follow the same steps like I showed you earlier so I'm going to make this roughly about one inch in height um, to go at the very bottom of the cake it's just going to give a, a nice beautiful mini floral uh, bouquet look so once you folded that to about uh, one inch I'm just going to take some scissors and I'm just going to cut that So now I'm going to repeat the same process again with the other cake. So again, you want to take an acetate sheet. You want to fold that in half to about one inch. And then again, you just want to take some scissors and cut that all the way to the end. So at this point, you have these two strips of acetate sheet, both about one inches in height. So again, I'm taking some of that semi-sweet chocolate chips, and this is about half a cup. Place it in the microwave on 10 second intervals until it's nice and melted. Once you have this nice, silky smooth consistency, I'm just going to take my acetate sheet and place it on top of my parchment paper. And we're going to follow the same steps again you also want to make sure that your mini cake is next to you just because the process is a little bit fast and you have to work a little bit quick so I'm just going to play, place that next to me and then taking my chocolate I'm just going to place that on top of my acetate sheet so we're going to follow the same steps again add a generous amount of that chocolate on top of your acetate sheet and then you're going to take your tapered spatula and we're just going to run that over the top making sure that we are um, you know running it nice and smooth in one direction just so that we have a nice even layer of chocolate all the way throughout our acetate sheet so it's pretty much the same step that we did earlier but just on a smaller size so once we've covered the entire um, acetate sheet with the chocolate and it's nice and smooth, then we're just going to find the corner of the acetate sheet and try to remove that from the parchment paper. So you just want to be nice and careful. Then you want to move your cake forward and you want to make sure that your acetate sheet is touching the bottom of your cake board. You want to be nice and slow with this process, but you also want to be very careful. So carefully go all the way around your cake making sure that the acetate sheet is touching the bottom at this point just as I showed mentioned earlier you don't want to overlap you want to leave that little piece hanging this is just going to make the process of removing the acetate sheet a lot more easier so we're going to repeat the same process again I've sped up this part of the video just because I've showed you how to do this earlier so you want to just add a generous layer of that chocolate on top of our acetate sheet once you've done that, you want to take your tapered spatula and you want to run that through the top. 
going in that same direction just so we have a nice even layer of chocolate on top of our acetate sheet. So you do have to do this a couple of times before you have a nice beautiful smooth finish of chocolate on your acetate sheet. So once you do, you want to carefully find the corner of your acetate sheet and again you want to lift that away from the parchment paper. Again trying to work quickly and carefully. So once you've removed the acetate sheet from the parchment paper, you want to carefully wrap your cake with the acetate sheet, making sure that the acetate sheet is touching the bottom of your cake board. And you want to turn your cake while you are also um, putting the acetate sheet around your cake. So just be nice and careful with this process and take your time. And then you see that little piece of that um, acetate sheet, you want to leave that hanging over the edge. This is just going to make it a lot easier when we are trying to remove the acetate sheet from the chocolate. So just carefully press that acetate sheet next to the cake. And now we're going to place this into the fridge until it's nice and set. Could take about 10 to 15 minutes. So at this point, both of the cakes have been in the fridge and the chocolate has completely set. So now we're just going to carefully remove that acetate sheet from the chocolate. So you can see that piece that's hanging over the edge, we're just going to carefully peel that back. So you can see it comes out nice and easily. And then where that joint is, see how easily it was able to remove it from the um, edge. So we're just going to repeat that same process again. Carefully removing that acetate sheet from the chocolate. And because there's no overlap, you can see that that little excess piece you just want to pull down and you can have that beautiful, nice, smooth, clean edge. So it didn't actually cause a lot of trouble this time, so definitely recommend not overlapping it. So you can see I have this very beautiful final um, finish and border of chocolate at the bottom of these mini floral cake bouquets. So now I'm moving on to the next step, which is the roses. So you can use buttercream roses, or if you want, you can use fresh roses as well. If you don't want to create any piped buttercream designs and you want to make it a little bit more easier for yourself, you can always use a fresh rose just leave one inch of the stem at the bottom and you just want to cut that off um, however if you do decide to use a fresh rose on top of your cake then you want to make sure that the border of your chocolate is also a little bit higher because you want the fresh rose to match the same level of your chocolate um, that went all around the cake so something to keep in mind if you do go for a uh, fresh rose you want the chocolate all around the cake to also be a little bit taller and also if you do use a fresh rose you want to make sure that you cover the bottom with some plastic wrap because you don't want any of the fluids from the stem actually going inside of your cake so you just want to make sure that you twist that um, plastic wrap all around the bottom of your stem and then you can see that excess plastic wrap, you just want to cut that off. And at this point, you can just place this rose in the center of your cake, um, making sure that the chocolate wrap that goes around is a little bit taller, just so that it fits to the same height of your cake. So I've decided to create buttercream roses and make the whole mini floral bouquet edible. So I'm taking this super red gel based food coloring by Chef Master and adding in a few drops into my buttercream. And you want to give everything a nice mix so i do want to remind you that these gel based food colorings are a lot more concentrated so a little bit does go a long way and your buttercream is going to get and develop more color as it sits so you want to gradually add more and more um, gel based food coloring to your buttercream you don't want to add in more because it's harder to take away than it is to add so definitely gradually build your color so at this point you can see that it's not that bright so i'm just going to add a little bit more of that gel based food coloring and then give everything a nice mix again so you can see that I have this very nice beautiful red shade but I want this to be a little bit more brighter so I am going to add a little bit more of that gel based food coloring to my buttercream 
So you can see that, you know, you don't create your color right away. It's not an instant process. You do have to gradually build your color until you're happy with the shade that you get. And you do also want to keep in mind that as the buttercream sits, the color actually becomes more and more concentrated as well. So at this point, I am happy with the red shade and I am going to be using this color to pipe my uh, red buttercream roses. So now I'm just going to be adding this buttercream to a disposable piping bag. So I'm also going to be adding a coupler to this piping bag, which is this additional attachment that you can attach to your piping bag so that you can switch around the different types of piping tips that you want to use. So because I'm going to be doing larger and smaller roses, I'm going to be adding a coupler to my piping bag just so that I can switch between the different types of piping tips. So you just want to add the, the coupler's first piece and score the top of your piping tip and then cut off the excess amount. You don't want to cut off too much otherwise the coupler can come out. So then I'm taking this piping tip which is the Wilton tip number 104 which is the rose petal tip as well as the Wilton tip number 102 which is a slightly smaller version of the tip 104 to create smaller mini roses. So I'm just going to take the tip number 104 and I'm just going to place that on top of the coupler and then taking that little ring you're just going to twist that on top. This is just going to secure the piping tip in place. And now that we've added our coupler and our piping tip to our piping bag, we're just going to um, unfold the edges of our piping bag. And then you just want to carefully add in your buttercream inside of your piping bag. So you just want to cup it around your hand and then you're just going to take your spatula and add your buttercream inside the piping bag and then just kind of use your hands to take out any of that um, buttercream off of the spatula. So you're just going to do that. You don't want to add too much buttercream um, in your piping bag because that will reduce the uh, control of your flowers. So now we're also going to need a flower nail and this is what we're going to be creating our flowers on as well as this flower block. This is just going to allow us to hold our flower nail in place when we are doing any other tasks or when we're not use, uh, creating any flowers. I also created these parchment squares using some parchment papers which I'm going to be creating my roses on as well as this round cake board which I'm going to be placing my roses on as well. So now that you know all of the different materials we're going to need when we're creating our buttercream roses, we're just going to get started. So first you want to take your flower nail and you're going to apply a little bit of buttercream on top of the flower nail, flip the flower nail upside down onto the parchment paper, and now we can create our rose. So what you want to do is you want to hold your um, piping bag nice and straight and kind of create this little dome in the center. Then holding your um, flower nail upright, you want to create this center spiral. Then we're going to create our petals starting from the bottom, kind of creating this up and down motion. We're going to create three petals. Then we're going to overlap our petals um, on, on the previous petals, so creating about five of those. I only created about two of them for this one because I'm keeping my roses a little bit smaller because I want them um, to fit the top of my flower bouquet. So I'm just going to repeat the same process again, kind of create this little mini triangle dome, then holding your piping tip nice and upright, you're going to create this spiral while you are turning your flower nail. Then for the rose petals, you're going to kind of hold your piping bag from the bottom, create this up and down motion and overlap on the previous petal. I like to create three petals in the center and then I like to overlap on the previous petal, creating about five of them following that same motion of going up and then pulling down. So I'm creating a bunch of these roses just because I want to have a variety of different sizes of roses just so that I can adjust on the top of my floral bouquet. So you can see right now um, there is some of that buttercream on my piping tip so I'm just going to clean that off. This is also where that flower block is kind of important. You can see my flower nail is on top of my flower block while I'm creating, uh, cleaning my piping tip. So again, whatever um, remaining buttercream was on that flower nail, I just used that to place my parchment paper on top. Following the same step again, you want to create that little back and forth motion to create that center height, creating this little spiral and then creating petals. So I like to create three petals in the center, then overlap on my previous petal, creating this up and down motion, halfway overlapping on my previous petal. So if you are finding it a little bit difficult to create these buttercream flowers, I will leave a link in the eye icon above just so that you can um, learn in depth how to create buttercream flowers if you are struggling with it. So you can follow that step by step as well. 
Um, but the process, it does take a little bit of time and some practice. You just want to make sure that you constantly are using buttercream that is still firm because the heat of your hand will warm the buttercream. So if you feel like your buttercream flowers are loosening up, just place your buttercream bowl into the fridge for a few minutes just so it gets nice and firmed as well. So now I'm just going to show you a little bit of another angle just so that you can see how I've created that little extra triangle dome on top. So you can see the height of that triangle dome and then you want to hold your piping tip nice and straight and create that spiral motion while you are moving your flower nail. Then you want to hold your piping tip from up and pull down and you want to overlap halfway on your previous petal. You also want to make sure that the narrow side of your piping tip is facing upwards. That's what's going to give you those nice thin petals. So you want to make sure that your petals are overlapping halfway on the previous petal. That's what's going to give you that nice, beautiful, realistic look to your rose. So now I'm going to repeat the same process again, but now I'm using the Wilton tip number 102 just so that I can create a few smaller roses as well. Just because I want to make sure that I have a variation of different sizes for my mini floral bouquet on top. So you're following the same steps like I showed you with the larger rose, but you're going to repeat that with the mini roses. So what you're going to do is you're just going to follow again. You're going to create that little mini triangle dome. Then you're going to create that spiral while you are going to be turning your flower nail. And then you're going to create those little up and down motions to create the rose petals previously overlapping on the other petal. And I'm going to create um, smaller ones as well just so that I can have a variety of different types of roses to fill my top of my floral bouquet. So now I'm just going to show you one last one of this mini floral um, rose. So again, create that mini triangle, then create that spiral in the center, and then you want to create the rose petals kind of overlapping halfway on the previous petal. And you have a nice, beautiful mini floral rose. So now that I've created all of the variation in different sizes of roses, the large ones, as well as a bunch of mini little uh, roses as well, um, now at this point what I want to do is I'm going to place both of these large and mini roses inside of the fridge um, for them to get nice and firm just so that it's easy for me to apply and arrange all of these beautiful roses on top of my mini floral cake bouquet. So these buttercream flowers were in the fridge for about 10 to 15 minutes and they are nice and firm to the touch. So when I touch them, none of that buttercream gets onto my hand. So it's going to make it a lot more easier for me to be able to arrange these roses on the top of my mini floral cake bouquet. So you just want to bring one of the cake forwards and then you're just going to start arranging the roses on top of the cake. So this is going to be a little bit of a trial and error process just because there are different sizes of roses and you want them to fit perfectly on top of your mini floral bouquet. So I'm starting off by adding one of those large roses right next to the side of the bouquet and then a slightly smaller one and you can see I moved that around because it felt like it fit there perfectly. So now I'm taking a little bit of a larger one and place that on the side. And now just to fit in the fill in the gaps, I'm just going to add some of the smaller roses. So I placed one in the center, but you can see it's slightly still too big. So I'm using these cake tweezers and kind of removing some of that excess buttercream out and then placing the rose in the center. And then you can see that there is a little bit of a gap on the sides as well. So I'm just going to take some of those mini roses and try to fit those to perfectly fit the corner of the floral bouquet. So um, you can see that it didn't fit perfectly, so I'm just going to take that rose out and I'm just going to place another rose that fits a little bit better. So I do want to show you that this is a little bit of a trial and error process. Um, you won't get these uh, roses to fit perfectly right away, so you will have to play around with some of them. So you can see the center one I didn't like so much, so I'm going to replace it with another slightly smaller one. And you can see that there is a little bit of a gap in the corner as well, so I placed a small little mini rose there as well. So the more roses that you are going to add, the more full the bouquet is going to look. So you can see that the center, um, there is still a gap, so I still need to add a rose there as well. So I'm just going to move around the larger rose just because I want the center one to fit a little bit better. And then I'm going to replace it with a slightly smaller rose on the top and then fill the gap with another mini rose. So now I have a very nice full floral bouquet. So you can see that it didn't kind of happen instantly. I had to play around with the different sizes of roses until I finally was happy with the uh, floral arrangement. 
So if you found that a little bit hard, you can also always pipe directly in the center, um, creating mini rosettes using the Wilton tip number 18, which is an open star tip. And I'll leave a link in the eye icon above showing you how to create those mini rosettes as well. The next option you also have is you can use fresh roses. As I mentioned earlier, you just want to leave one inch of the stem, cover that with some plastic wrap so that none of that fluid from the stem gets into the cake. And you also want to make sure that the um, chocolate uh, border is slightly higher just so that it covers almost to the top of your rose, giving a nice, beautiful, flat floral bouquet. So the options are endless. So you can create the fresh buttercream roses, you can create rosettes directly on top, or you can add the fresh rose rose so now moving on to the next cake you can see that I'm just going to place those roses on top um, and sometimes it can actually happen a lot more easily so over here when I was placing my floral rose arrangements it was happening a little bit more easily compared to the first one also you want to keep in mind that if your buttercream roses are starting to get softer just place them into the fridge again for a few minutes until they're nice and firm to the touch again so that you can actually handle them and place them on top of your floral bouquet. So you can see I'm adding my last rose on top and it has fit nicely. So you can always go back and add in some filler roses to fill in any of the gaps that you have. So you can see that these mini floral cake bouquets are actually complete. So we have a very nice, beautiful chocolate base with that gold painted edge and then those beautiful buttercream roses. And you can see the same with the other um, mini floral cake bouquet as well. So we have these beautiful buttercream filled roses on top and then we have that painted gold and then that chocolate base. So now that these mini floral cake bouquets are complete, I'm just going to add one final touch which is optional and that's basically adding in the uh, red string to go all around it. So this is basically just going to make the uh, bouquets look a little bit more elegant and elevate how they look. So over here I have this red ribbon. I'm just going to take a little bit of this string and I'm just going to wrap that around my mini floral cake bouquet. So I've already measured this string by actually going around the cake and seeing if it fits to size and you also want to make sure that the string is slightly longer because we are going to be creating a bow and whatever excess string there is we can just always cut that off so I'm just going to create a bow and once you've created the perfect bow I'm going to uh, cut the back of this string just so that I can wrap this around my mini floral cake bouquet and it's a lot more easier rather than trying to take it over the top so you want to just take some scissors and you just want to cut off from the back of your string so once you've done that now it's going to be a lot more easy for you to be able to wrap this uh, string around your mini floral cake bouquet so you just want to do this nice and slowly and carefully taking your um, uh, cake forward and then you're just going to take the string and you're just going to carefully place that around the cake so I'm going to do it where the border is between the chocolate and the gold just so it's right in the center just carefully going all the way around and there is going to be some of that excess string because we did cut a longer piece and it's going to be hard to kind of overlap that on top of the string so it's better that you just take some scissors and cut that excess string off and once you've done that, you have this beautiful mini floral cake with this beautiful little extra added touch with the string. So I'm just going to do that on the next bouquet as well. So at this point, I have created the mini floral cake bouquets um, with the chocolate base, the gold painted uh, luster dust and the red roses gold cake board and that red string to go around for the final touch and you can also play around with the different types of color combinations so you can do the white with some gold luster dust and some pink roses or teal blue with some silver and pink roses or white roses so the possibilities are endless and you can make this for anyone special it doesn't have to be for valentine's day you can make this for mother's day you can make these as wedding favors or even a bridal shower party but i hope you found this video tutorial helpful and if you are still struggling with buttercream flowers then definitely watch this next video for more helpful tips thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you guys in my next video